What birds? Okay, that didn't sound very good. Birds on the right. Okay, so state malfunction, please, Elton. So, loss of N1, AGT, N1 to the crease. Metal 360, that's all understood. Okay, I will tell the cabin crew as well, because you don't have anything since you don't have any electrical power. So, waiting for the APU. Cabin crew. Uh, prepare for no time available emergency. No time available emergency. Uh, landing very shortly. Three six zero, you clear to land runway two eight. Surface wheel is one zero zero degrees and five knots. We have all emergency equipment standing by. Flap inhibit switch to flap inhibit switch. Flap inhibit. We can put the terrain inhibitors as well. Terrain inhibitors. Wind three one zero one six. Three one right. Right on. Third one. Three one right. Delta two three. Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor, yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. So, I've had a lot of questions about how uh, pilots would deal if both engines would fail. Would we be able to land or not? Well, today you'll see. Stay tuned. Altimeters. Standard set, three times passing, flight of a 6-2, standard flight of a 9 zero. What's the big What, birds? Okay, that didn't sound very good. On the right. Okay, so state malfunction, please, Elton. So, loss of N1, AGT, N1 to the crease. Uh, I would say both engine failure. Both engine failures confirmed? With severe, severe damage. Se yes. With severe damage, okay. In that case, there's no point in trying to, um, to restart the engine. Agree. So, if you can start the APU, please. Starting APU, and I will declare Mayday. Yes, please. Starting in. Uh, Mayday, 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 Mentor 360, both engines failing. Request proceed back to runway 28 if available. Mentor 360, your Mayday is recorded at a time 1924. Copy, turning right and with request full emergency equipment upon arrival. Mentor 360, that's all understood. Okay, I will tell the cabin crew Check. as well, because you don't have anything since you don't have any electrical power. So waiting for Cab the APU. Cabin crew. Uh, prepare for no time available emergency. No time available emergency. Uh, landing very shortly. Okay, that's it. So, as soon as we have electrical power, put it back on for me, please. I will. And we'll see if we can get back to, uh, to runway 28. I'm overbanking a little bit here now to get good visibility back. Check. And we're quite high for a quick return anyway. Thank you on the bus. I got the electrical power. Thank you. If you can please give me bank angle, bank angle. The uh, runway 28 ILS, please. Well, we're very high for runway 28, but it's the best chance we have. Bank you, angle. You agree? Bank I agree. Runway is inside. Take the gear down, please. Let's check. Flaps one. Check. I will give you that egg to the runway. Yes, please. We have it, and I will also give you this piece. Bank angle. Bank angle. Flaps five. Speed check. Bank angle. Bank angle. Flap inhibit switch to flap inhibit suite. Flap then inhibit. We can put the terrain inhibitors as well. Terrain inhibit as well. Speed in the control. 2000 feet. Check. Enter. Two, three, six, zero, five, Flaps 10. Enter 360, you're clear to land runway 28. Surface wind is 100 degrees at 5 knots. We have all emergency equipment standing by for you. Flaps 10. Just keep giving me flaps as the speed is decreasing now. Check. Sync rate. Sync rate. Sync rate. Yeah. Flaps 40, please. Flaps 30, flaps 40. There we go. 
Brace. 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 Speed brakes up. Max manual braking. What are knots? 80 knots. 60 knots. Double in a Mentor 360 stop uh, in the third part of the run. Okay, I'm not going to set the parking brakes because the brakes are going to be really, really hot here. I'll, I'll keep it like this for now. Check. Okay, and holding it still. Cabin crew, stand by. Cabin crew, stand by. Okay, Elton, we are on the runway. We have survived. Yes. Which is a good thing. Yes, okay. It was good. Yeah. The, um, we have fairly high speed on landing. Um, not too bad though. Not too bad. Not too bad. So the, the brakes could potentially be hot, but what we'll do is we'll talk to the uh, the fire crew when they appear on the uh, the fire freaks who want one this small six. And I'm also going to talk to the cabin to see how the uh, how the situation is in the back. Okay. Okay. Good. So I'll uh, let's see. I'll talk to um, fire crew and want one six first. So your radio number one. My radio one. Uh, Dublin uh, Fire from Mentor 360. Uh, we have stopped just short of uh, Echo 6 and uh, would like you to give a full look over the, um, the aircraft. Uh, we had two engines fail and with severe damage, so would like you to tell me if there's any leaks of any sort and also if uh, how the brakes are looking, if they're hot or not, and anything else that you can see around the, the, um, the aircraft. Anything that would lead up to a need for an evacuation. Okay, let's see if the fire crew is coming here soon. Ah, here they are. Excellent, very good. Okay, so temperature should be okay. Uh, I'll put the sparking brake on there. Flip the my lights. Is that stand up? Set. Standard set, passing flight level 46, climbing flight level 90. VNAV, after takeoff checks, and you can release the cabin crew. Release after takeoff checks. Air compress, climbing 2.4. Set. Altimeters. Standard set. Three times passing flight of a six two, climb flight of a nine zero. What's the big one? Check this one. What birds? Okay, that didn't sound very good. Birds on the right. Okay, so state malfunction, please, Elton. So loss of N one I A G T N one two degrees. Uh, I would say both engine failure. Both engine failures confirmed? With severe damage, Se yes. With severe damage, okay. In that case, there's no point in trying to, um, to restart the engines. Agree. So if you can start the APU, please. Starting APU, and I will play my day. Right, guys. So what we've just seen now uh, were effectively two flocks of birds that hit both our left and our right engine. And when that happened, they filled the engine up with dead birds, which caused the engine fans, which is in the front of the engine, to seize up. Now, when that happens, um, both engines will instantaneously fail. They will stop producing forward thrust, which will effectively turn the aircraft into a glider. And also, it will remove all electrical power for a second, which disconnects the autopilot. The electrical power very quickly comes back in the form of battery power, but it will only come back to the captain's side. So that's why you can see only the screens on the captain's side and only the communication on the, um, the captain's side will work. Now, when something like this would happen, I would ask the uh, pilot monitoring, which is Elton in this case, to uh, state the malfunction. Now, he quickly found out that we have dual engine failure, but he also said that we have severe damage. And he can see that because the EGT, or red lining, that's why you can see that two red um, instruments on the central screen. And also, there is no rotation of N1 on either of the engines. So that means that both fans are standing completely still and when that happens, it's impossible to restart the engine. And this is why we didn't waste any time to try to restart it. We just start to try to find a suitable alternate to land in. Yes, please. Dublin, uh, 
Mayday, 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 Mentor 360, both engines failing. Request proceed back to runway 28 if available. Mentor 360, your Mayday is recorded at a time 1924. Copy, turning right and we request full emergency equipment upon arrival. Mentor 360, that's all understood. Okay, I will tell the cabin crew Check. as well, because you don't have anything since you don't have any electrical power. So waiting for Cab the APU. Cabin crew. Uh, prepare for a no time available emergency. No time available emergency. Uh, landing very shortly. Okay guys, as you notice there, we uh, switched on the auxiliary power unit, the APU, very quickly and that's because we want to restore power to the aircraft as quickly as we can. I also told the cabin crew that they have to get ready for no time available emergency and I'm saying that because I don't have the time to fully brief them on the nature of the emergency. I just want them to be aware that something has happened that required them to get the cabin ready for a potential evacuation or landing very, very quickly. Okay, that's it. So, as soon as we have electrical power, put it back on for me, please. I will. And we'll see if we can get back to, uh, to runway 28. I'm overbanking a little bit here now to get good visibility back. Check. And we're quite high for a quick return anyway. Thank you on the bus. I got the electrical power. Thank you. So at this point, I am looking for a possible runway to land at. And I knew I took off from runway 10, and we have the opposite runway, runway 28, available. Now I'm saying that we're a little bit high, and that's because when the engine failure occurred, we were at about 6,000 feet. The, this is different from what Sully had when he um, executed the miracle on the Hudson. He was at a much lower altitude, which meant that he didn't have the chance to turn back. I do, and uh, in this case, when you do a 180 turn, you lose an average around 2,000 feet, which would put me at an altitude of about 4,000 feet, or slightly above at this point, and I'm about 8 miles away. Now, an aircraft will use about 3 miles for, per 1,000 feet to descend, so I'm quite high, but I'm still within the, um, the landable zone. I'm overbanking the aircraft slightly because that will actually bring me down a little bit and will also uh, potentially give me a slightly more track miles in order to get towards the airport. If you can please give me bank angle, bank angle. The uh, runway 28 ILS, please. Well, we're very high for runway 28, but it's the best chance we have. Bank you, angle. You agree? Bank angle. Runway inside. Take the gear down, please. Check. Flaps one. Check. I've just asked Elton to please give me the ILS approach for runway 28. And the reason that I do this is because I want to see a, a picture in front of me of how the, um, the final approach track looks on my navigation display. And I also want the reference speed in order to know how far away from them I am when I'm starting to take the different flap settings. I've also decided to take the gear down in order to add some drag and to get me down quicker um, because I need to make sure that you know, my energy level is not too high when I touch down on uh, runway 28 so I can break the aircraft down to a standstill in a safe way. I will give you that egg to the runway. Yes, please. You have it, and I will also give you this piece. Thanks. Bank angle. Bank angle. Flaps 5. Speed check. Bank angle. Bank angle. Flap inhibit switch to flap inhibit suite. Flap and inhibit. We can put the terrain inhibitors as well. Terrain inhibit as well. So now I'm starting to ask Elton to give me different flap steps and that's in order for me to reduce the speed. The lower speed I can have when I touch down, the more safely I'll be able to break. I've also told him to um, give me flap and terrain inhibit and that's in order to get as little warnings as possible. I know that I only have one chance at this because I don't have any engine trust and I also know that I'm likely not going to be able to get all of the flap steps that I need out before the landing. So I don't need those warnings. Speed in the control. 2,000 feet. Check. The leader, the mentor, 2360, final. Flap 10. Mentor 360, you're clear to land runway 28. The surface wind is 100 degrees at 5 knots. We have all emergency equipment standing by for you. 
flaps there. Just keep giving me flaps as the speed is decreasing now. Check. Sync rate. Sync rate. So we're getting a sync rate warning at this point, and uh, that is not a problem because I know how high I am in relation to the runway since I'm fully visual. This would only be a problem in case I didn't have enough speed and the sync rate was coming because the aircraft was effectively stalling. But at this point, I am just maneuvering the aircraft to be able to touch down within the touchdown zone. Sync rates. Yeah. Flaps 40, please. Flaps 30, flaps 40, there we go. Brace. Brace, brace, brace. The brace call is given at approximately 50 feet, and that's in order to tell the cabin crew and the passengers to get into the brace position for a potential crash landing. Speed brakes up. Max, manual braking. As you can see here, I was actually manually reaching for the speed brake lever and the reason for that is that I know that we're coming in with slightly higher speed and I know that sometimes when that happens the um, uh, speed brakes might not activate automatically. So I'm reaching for them and I'm extending them manually to make sure that the flight spoilers and the ground spoilers on the wing uh, is coming up and that will bring the entire weight of the aircraft down onto the landing gear so that I'll get as much effective braking as possible. The warning that you're hearing is actually the takeoff configuration warning and that's coming because the thrust levers are still in the forward position where I left them during the engine failure. As soon as I uh, close the thrust levers, that warning will disappear. What are knots? 80 knots, 60 knots. Doubling Mentor 360 is top uh, in the third part of the runway. So, right guys, so this, this is what might happen, okay? Now we were very lucky, we were at a high altitude when, uh, when the, um, the bird strikes hit, uh, which meant that we had plenty of room to get back in towards Dublin, and we landed on the opposite runway, which meant that we had a little bit of tailwind. But this is what you do. Like I was saying in the beginning of the video, there are no set rules for how to deal with something like this. We just have to use your knowledge, be quick in reactions, like getting the APU running, for example, is crucial in order to get electrical power back. And with electrical power, you also get all of the screens, all of the communication. And also, crucially, the hydraulic pumps will start working as well. So it will be easier to control the aircraft. And then focus on getting the aircraft in to land inside of the aircraft, oh sorry, the airport boundary. And the reason for that, the reason why we, we stay a little bit high, with a little bit higher um, energy, is that it's much better to land with a higher speed on a long runway and then stop maybe towards the end of the runway. As long as you stop inside of the airport perimeter, it means that these guys, the, um, the firefighter, will be able to, to reach us um, and help us as quickly as possible. If we misjudge it and we take off too much speed or we go too far away from the airport, well then we might end up landing outside of the runway and outside of the, uh, the airport. So not only will we not have immediate help by them then, but we might also um, hit buildings, motorways or cause third party damage and this is something that we definitely want to avoid. So in this instant everything went well. Um, you will always miss things, you will always make mistakes, but the main thing and the only really important thing here is to get the aircraft back onto a runway or onto a field or somewhere in one piece so that we can potentially evacuate our passengers. Great. Um, if you have any questions regarding this, and I'm suspecting that you do, then uh, please write them in here, run comments on the video. Um, give me a like if you like these type of videos, by the way, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, and if you like more of these type of videos, more of these technical videos from inside of the, um, the cockpit, well then I highly recommend you to get the Mentor Aviation app. Now I've created a lot of great collections in there. Some of them are filmed in, in 360, so you can look around. Some of them is with wide angle, but they're all highly technical and they will show you how we, the flight crew, me and Elton, uh, how we deal with similar situations. And you can also chat with us. So if you have a direct question, well then you just tag at Mentor and that will send me a, uh, a push, push message. So if I have the uh, phone ready, I'll be able to answer you. Have an absolutely fantastic day, wherever you are out there, and um, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.
Right guys, I really hope that you liked that. If you want more content like that, more aviation content, well then, check this out. Uh, I hope that you have subscribed to the channel and that you've highlighted the little notification bell. See you inside of the Mentor Aviation app and have an absolutely fantastic day. Bye-bye.